I want to talk about a topic today regarding this white jello like fungus on aquarium driftwood, aquarium spiderwood, manzanita wood, uh, any type of wood you're keeping in your aquarium. Sometimes when you add it to a new or if it's a new piece of wood to the aquarium, sometimes it grows like this jello like fungusy white gel. Uh, I don't know what you'd even call it, but it's a scare. It really scares fish keepers. And today in this video, I want to touch base on what the heck it is, how to fix it, etc., etc. Um, we're just hanging out. It's a boring weeknight tonight, but um, I'm kind of planning planning out this entire kind of like living room area, and it's coming up, it's coming out pretty cool. Uh, I'm gonna have two racks here in front of this window, and I'm also working on the back of the entertainment center build. For those of you who haven't seen seen the entertainment center build. I feel like the entire internet has, but it's, uh, this is it, and it looks pretty cool. But guys, let's talk about aquarium spiderwood or aquarium driftwood in general, getting this white, like, fungusy weirdness to it. Chances are you picked up your driftwood online or from your local fish store, and that really doesn't matter where you got your wood from. Um, this is spiderwood in particular, and if you're looking to maybe purchase this, I'll throw a link. It's an Amazon product. Um, it's a really good buy, actually. It's like six pieces of spiderwood for like, I think, 10 to $20. I forget the price, but it's really cool stuff. What I'm getting at here, though, guys, it doesn't matter what type of wood you're adding to your fish aquarium. Chances are it is going to grow this fungus like gelatin around it. Um, it is, I boil all of my, or I shouldn't say I boil all of it, but I boil all of the wood that I can just because it helps sink it and it helps to remove all the air bubbles from the cells of the wood so that it sinks. And it's also said that boiling your aquarium driftwood or spider wood, uh, it helps kill all the bacteria that could possibly be in there and entering your fish aquarium. They say this with a lot of stuff. Same with like soil. If you're doing a dirt aquarium, you're supposed to bake the soil just to kind of kill off all the bacteria. If I'm being honest, I don't boil all of my wood. But if I can like get it to sink easier and immediately, I will boil it. So then what happens is a person adds the aquarium driftwood to set aquarium or whatever fish tank you're using and maybe a week or two goes by and all of a sudden your driftwood or spiderwood or manzanita wood starts to grow this white like fungus. And yes, this stuff is pretty funky and it's really kind of intrusive on the eye and uh, everybody kind of freaks out because they think it's like this crazy bacteria that's entered your tank and you need to shut it all down and kill it with fire. But that's actually not the case. And what what's happening here is when you add this new wood to your aquarium, diatoms and such are feeding on that new growth of the wood. Here's some pictures of what to expect. So here it is. It's like a white like gelatin fungus. It looks pretty creepy like it's like a uh, gelatin membrane over the wood and some fish will actually pick away at this sometimes snails will eat it sometimes common pleckles will gobble this stuff right up um what's happening here is bacteria and diatoms are kind of just feeding and what's happening is the wood itself is finding like an equilibrium within your ecosystem of your aquarium and wood is kind of a foreign substance for it and you might be asking yourself, hey, Chris, why are you doing all these videos on different types of wood and all the variables that go along with aquarium driftwood? It's because I myself am deep diving into all of the different types of wood. And I figured I would just kind of uh, knock out these videos on the different types of wood, uh, the different variables. And a lot of the questions that have been asked or given to me or asked to me, sorry. By the way, I found this super cool piece of wood in the river the other day and i just had to have it so it's actually hollow here one sec let me move here a little bit it's actually hollow so the fish go on the inside and yes this is a six foot tank the water looks a little murky and that's because there's a lot of algae in the water column because this window is pretty much wide open i'm gonna have two of like these uh metal baker's racks and they're just gonna be stacked full of plants against that wall we're going to be building the back of this entertainment center. Actually, that's going to be the next project. I actually have to support the floor in the basement before I start adding more aquariums to this spot, though, because this is this is in the middle of the like this whole upstairs living room and the floor needs support because uh, that's six 20 gallon tanks, six times two, that's 120. 
uh, what's 120 times eight? 120 times eight, that will give you the weight of all the water right there. And I need more support. So um, the office is still a hot mess. We won't go in there. I'm also working downstairs and there's a lot to come on that. Also added a lot of, uh, I just did this recent build over here on this spider wood, um, or, or sorry, this is an Aquion rimless, uh, God, I can't speak, Aquion rimless tank that I dirted and it looks really cool. Um, the fungus has not come in on that aquarium spider wood yet. I do, I did add some regular aquarium driftwood over here, but the fungus, the white gelatin fungus hasn't grown on that yet. So I couldn't do a video to showcase it yet, but it's coming in any day on that tank because I just know that it comes. What I'll do is I'll throw some snails in there. That helps it. Sometimes it doesn't. All right, guys, let me know in the comment section what you think of aquarium driftwood slash spiderwood and the fungus if you've dealt with this. Uh, just a quick video to help uh, the hobby in itself. So give this video a thumbs up for aquarium spiderwood and funguses and fixing it.